I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. I am Julio, joined by Francisco. Here I am. What's up, dude? I've been doing a, uh, a gratitude journal. Really? How lovely. What I, got you started on doing that? My girlfriend. I. That's a nice handed thing. Handed it to me. That's a nice thing. Said I should try it. And you just say what you're grateful for every day? So it's a book that is set up. It's easy. It's almost like mad libs mm -hmm. they have okay. you know prompts and and it's one page it takes less than five minutes in the morning and, and then less than five minutes in, in the evening and so there are i guess three lines in the morning there's three questions in the morning mm -hmm. and each one has i guess three lines and it says like what am i grateful for and then you write three quick things and then it says, like, what would make today great? Mm -hmm. And then three things. And then it's like self affirm It's like affirmations. So like, I did a good job. I, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, whatever. And then at night, it's sort of similar and asks you to sort of look back and, like, do, do it again in slightly different questions. And I've only been doing it for a week. Um, I feel better these days. But I don't know if it's the journal. Mm -hmm. But I feel better about life. You know, you were saying you you haven't been feeling that good. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot uh, less heavy. It's good lately, and it translates to some really interesting things that I've noticed. One is I have a lot more discipline about my eating. Interesting. I'm not eating dessert. That's usually my sort of issue is that I want ice cream after dinner and, and it, it feeling good has made me not crave oh yeah to ice cream as much. Yeah. And by the way, when I say ice cream, I'm talking ice cream with like two scoops of peanut butter and like then a big ice cream cookie bowl. butter and then like nuts. And and this is the type of thing that you could easily be doing every day. I I yeah. Okay. And I always do it because i exercise enough that i don't right. see it on my body and then thinking. i'm like well what difference does it make i mean the reality is you're eating 1200 calories in of sugar within an hour of bed like that right. fucks you up so yeah okay so that you Poison. it fucks up your energy levels your focus I mean, but the other thing is that my workouts i i'm pushing myself more right and um I'm just getting farther into the workout. Mm -hmm. I'm lift. I'm sticking to goals that I have for like, I'm going to do four sets of this and I do all four right, sets. Right. Instead like of, sticking, instead yeah. of doing the three and being like, I'm sweating. Uh, you don't have I'm to good. Do the fourth, yeah. um, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm finishing exercises. The active workout. Everything's just kind of like vibing a little, my energy's better. My vibes out to the world. Um, and I'm just a little more appreciative. And what I'm writing in this journal is super simple. So before you get into that, I'm curious, what spurred this on? Was there kind of like a general negativity where your girlfriend was like, listen, here's some constructive or like, what was it? Yes, I, I went, uh, and I'm not saying I'm out of it, but I have been in a period of my life of immense stress, strain, and tension, which for me manifests as um, kind of lashing out at the world, mm -hmm. being very sullen, yeah. closed off, not present. Mm -hmm. By the way, these were all things that I had done for years before I met my girlfriend, but no one had ever really called me out on it. Right. right. Um, and this whole idea of being present, when she started talking about it to me, I thought it was some voodoo mumbo jumbo <laughs> bullshit and i'm like give me a break i'm thinking about the future mm -hmm. you know it's not as if i'm daydreaming about video games right, i'm right. thinking about finances and goals it's like this seems important to me 
And eventually she brought me around to just re just remaining in the moment that you're in, which mm -hmm. allows you to listen better, which makes people like you more. And it all sort of lifts everything up. Mm -hmm. um, staying present, right. you know? It doesn't mean you have to be like exclusively present. Like you're allowed to also plan for things, but like, it, it, like including that yeah. in your kind of state That's is it. a nice thing. That's it. Yeah. So um, I don't know exactly when she presented me with this, this uh, gratitude thing, but she'd had it. I think she had tried it herself. She's really good herself about being present and, thoughtful and and just nice mm -hmm. um and so i think she kind of does these exercises without even having to write them in a journal that comes naturally to her but she thought it would be good for me and it, and she handed it to me and i've i've stuck to it i'm a weekend or so and she's a great kid dude i know <laughs> she's a great kid yeah yeah you know what we had a, an interesting conversation last night which i want to ask you about sure. and she said you know what do you want in five years Oy. I hate that question. Come on. I don't know, dude. You can say a material thing. No, I don't. I said a house. Yeah, maybe. I said I want a sick house. Like, I want, I guess, a kid, I think. Like, I don't fucking know. I just don't All know. Right, well, then don't say kid. What I, do you I don't know want the answer. In, what, 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 what do you want to have? What do you want to own? Or what do you want to have achieved? I would like to be making more money and... Okay. Doing things I will want to do. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I would like to have more money, which hopefully would lead me to having the same amount or more freedom to kind of do what I want to do. All right. Well, then, and I'm not going to ask you what specific amount of money you want, but let's say I said, okay, well, an amount of money that would enable you to have what in your apartment or your house? Dude, I, this is gonna sound annoying, but I just I like don't have anything that I really want as far as stuff. Okay, come on. What if you I swear had? What, I if, what if it was just something okay, as simple? What have, about you ever, this? have you ever walked around a house with heated floors, uh, with radiant heated floors in I, socks? Dude, I, I just, that kind of stuff doesn't excite me the way it excites Julio, me. I'm sorry, dude. Tell I, me I'm you've walked around, around a house that I have, had radiant I have, heated I have, floors. I have, I have, and it's nice. It's there's nothing like it. It's nice. I'll say this. Okay, I would like to have enough money that I can afford to like go to Antarctica. I don't even want to go to Antarctica. Like I got really seasick on my last trip. I have no interest in like that choppy water at the moment, but like to be able to be like, let's go to Antarctica to be able to like to do trips in a way that's like more extravagant. So, so this is a good answer. The luxury of choice. Yeah. The luxury of like having a person planning these trips for me as opposed to having to do it myself. Yeah, But, but also the luxury of, of choice of, of air travel that is almost spontaneous. Right. Meaning you, you won't say, well, I'm not going to go on a trip four days from now. I'm not going to buy flights four days from now because the flights are going to be too expensive. Right. And I'm not going to go to Europe four days from now because I need to plan a month or two ahead and wait till the flights are. Yeah. I would love to be able to comfortably without having to take a haircut from my own life at home, be able to. And like right now, dude, you know, I could pick up and fly wherever theoretically, but then getting there, you know, it would be nice to be able to stay at the place with the six spa. There you go. I You're a spa it. guy. I'd yeah. like to be able to stay at the place with the six spa and get treatments, get like massages and fucking yeah. just be able to relax so hard. You'd like to be able to stay at the I'm in Yara places. I'm in Geary. Is that what they are? Yeah. I guess that's one of the places, the Canyon ranch. I think these are domestic places, but like they're, yeah. these, they're these extravagant ones in the Alps and Vienna. The Wy Weimara, so I'm in Yara, the, uh, uh, Amon, the Amon hotels. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that might that be one, like that might be one of them. Twelve hundred, fifteen hundred really a night. They're yeah. nuts. Or like you know, yeah, like those Swiss Alps retreats and like going like going to the places you see on Instagram and being able to afford them. Like that the like sickest room at the sickest place and have that not be like a th an unaffordable thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's that sounds like a stupid answer, but that is actually That's not a stupid answer. But that we, is what I think we I had want. to pull it out of you, and that might change. I'm yeah. so aware that that might change. Like, dude, I saw this. You, we've all seen this video. The video of the little kid hitting the home run, and his dad just loses his mind. Like they're just practicing, and the dad like throws. He's throwing him pitches, and the kid hits one over the fence. And the dad is so psyched for the kid. It just made me want to like be a parent who's actively involved in my child's life. Wow. I get, I get triggered in those ways sometimes. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here. 
I've been, I, I feel those kind of, uh, those urges, especially when I was single, I would feel them more like I'd see a nice young family and it would just be, I get this like crippling sense of longing mm. now that I have a girlfriend and my life's a little bit more domesticated. I don't feel it as often, but I definitely would like to have like a nice family. Let me tell you something. You get that, you get that place for your family. You got a, a, a room set up for the baby. Mm hmm. To arrive, you put some, you know, one of those wheeling things over its head. What the hell are those things <laughs> yeah, called? Yeah, the, the spinny things. Yeah, someone. Forty-eight people are gonna DM us to hypnotize your question. fucking kid. Um, and you know what you love the most about that house, Julia? The kid. I don't know what. Waking up, putting your feet on the ground, <laughs> the heated floor, and realizing. It's warm down there. <laughs> Sh shuffling through the kitchen, not having to put slippers on. That's funny. In the dead of winter. That's funny. And your feet are warm because there's radiant heated floors. <laughs> Dude, radiant heated floors. Oh my god. I mean, I've never, I've never had, I've never lived. None of the houses I've ever, not my, not my family house, none of the apartments I've lived in. No, I've never lived in a house or a home that had radiant heated floors. I've only ever stayed in them. And when I found them, you just want to stand around. Yeah, it is nice. It's nice, dude. It's nice. That to me is like the height of luxury. More than more than one of those electronic toilets. Oh yeah, those are stupid. More than Japanese toilet. More than a shower that has multiple shower heads. <laughs> a wall of faucets. Dude, Hillary does a funny prank with like heating stuff. This just reminded me of this. Like she'll put on the heated seat on your seat when you're driving. I hate that. I know it's like a funny joke though. Hate it's like it so much. It, it's annoying, but it's like she has cute little gags that she'll do. That's mm. one of the, another one she'll do. She she just will pants me when we're hugging, like in <laughs> in private. But it's really funny, and she does it in a way like she like she starts with her thumbs up and then loops them down and around and catches on, and like she'll do that even just as a joke, and it's really funny. That's cute, getting me getting me all hot and bothered. Or anytime I'm like bent over for whatever reason, keep which, going. Yep. She'll just come up and start fucking squeezing, squeezing the cheeks, squeezing the cheeks. Mm -hmm. She goes, "Look at this, I kind of have a big butt." <laughs> She's not making fun of me for having a big butt. She's trying to make me feel okay about it. <laughs> But she'll start fucking squeezing them. Wowzer. Wowzer, baby. Sweetheart. Dude, I get so much satisfaction watching her eat. Do you feel this? When I watch her really like her food, and she goes, mm, I, I, the amount of satisfaction I get, I can just sit there and watch her eat all day, dude. This is, a lot of people feel this. <laughs> I love it. I get off on watching I, her eat. I like watching... I like watching my girlfriend clear a plate of food that I prepared for. Oh, that's good too. That makes me feel really good. That's yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. I'm not doing that as regularly as I imagine you are. So it's related, but maybe a little bit. Buddy, different. I made some barbecue chicken on the grill last night. Oh, that was it. Man, I stand over this stuff like I am watch I am, you know, overseeing the hatching of the last <laughs> you know, flock of precious eagles <laughs> i am so tender with these these uh, chickens the big thing i've learned is you know the the step up in my life from cooking you know just chicken breasts boneless breasts to cooking bone in yeah. meat is takes your life from a cooking life from like a four to a, an eight totally. because having the bone in so lets the meat here. retain its yeah. its humidity yeah it's like a forest of fauna you too totally it's like a type of place where you'd find soldier ants to suture a wound <laughs> dude i'll never forget those ribs you made me dude i'll literally never forget them well were, those were solid those are so good Hi. what's up chris Hi. chris was about to hop in with something something about meats but he unplugs his mic all the time um i had francis's barbecue chicken the other like yeah, last slice. week or two weeks it? ago and it was delicious Dude, it was so i don't cold, know if though. it got better maybe i maybe i heated it up for you i don't I it was it okay matter. if you have it good. fresh off the grill oh i imagine let me tell you something francis is a competent guy so so, so let me, can i walk you walk you through really quickly <laughs> sure a little bit of this yeah so th these are the things i've learned and this is kind of what i'm doing <laughs> so you get like i don't know eight or ten bone in chicken thighs i like the thigh I've become a big thigh guy Thigh's good yeah thighs love the good. thigh and i uh i take them out of the packaging i wash them with water mm. and then i pat them all dry completely dry with paper towels 
I cover them liberally with a nice coffee rub. Wow. So but is this something you make yourself? No, I just buy it, but it's it's good. Stuff. It's it's good. Whole Foods probably. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I just both sides rub, and then I put them back in the refrigerator for the day with nothing covering them, because the coldness of the refrigerator dries out the skin. How do you learn this? Like Reddit or I think like it's you just, just one of those things like someone tells you a little piece. Oh and yeah. Then someone tells you, you know what you got to do, bro. And you eventually. <laughs> Yeah, eventually you've got uh, your own game plan. Right. Or maybe you read a few things in a cookbook. I don't know what it is. Love it. Just little bits and pieces. And the, by by drying out the skin of the chicken, that's how you get it nice and crispy on the grill. Dude. So then you take your 10 chickens. By the way, after you, you pull it out of the refrigerator and you let it come to sort of room temperature for at least half an hour to 45 minutes. Got it. Makes I sense. don't know what the danger time is right Probably where like not that. how long you can let chicken sit out in the on the counter before all of a sudden bacteria starts problems start <laughs> creeping in so how many people is 10 pieces of chicken for well i just cooked it for me and my girlfriend but you were planning to have some left over yeah. And you'll probably you probably eat two pieces, she eats one situation. She had two, I had three. That's how good okay. they were. Nice. But I was full. Ah, and nice. then I reached for a fourth and she was like, Are you sure? And I was like, No, I'll be sick. Okay. She was like, See? I do that too. Yeah. And so we just cooked to have a ton. But this would have been enough for four people easily. Sick. Yeah. I think it maybe it's twelve twelve thighs. But here's the thing. You bring your grill to the to the right temperature. I, I throw get it to about three fifty. And then I I put the chicken on skin down there for about, I don't know, 12, 13 minutes, okay? And then I flip it for like four or five minutes. And then you've got your barbecue sauce with a brush and you start brushing every, one side of all the chicken thighs. And then you flip it to let that side be down. And while that side's down, you brush the other side. But this is the tricky part. Mm. You cannot let the barbecue sauce side be heat down for more than like two minutes. Okay. Because the caramelized sugar within the barbecue sauce will burn very, very fast. So two minutes. Two minutes. You flip it to the next side. And then when that side's down, you rebrush it. And just keep adding layer after layer, brushing this this beautiful barbecue sauce on there. So then by having the layer on top, you can then flip it back over and it's a fresh round of two you minutes. You keep it going and it just seeps in and it keeps mm. getting more and more delicious. And then I, I listen, I'm no I'm no I'm no magician, I'm no witch doctor. Fucking Rodney I use, Scott over here. I use a meat thermometer uh to make sure that I'm close. 165 is about the temperature of chicken that you want. But I'll take it off the grill at like 155. Playing because a little hardball. Then it well, then it keeps cooking, right. and it'll get there. Um, you don't want to get it to there and then have it go past. Right. So that's my chicken. That's what I did. And Damn boy, oh dude. boy, I'm figuring it out, man. I'm getting excited about this stuff. Sounds so fucking delicious, bro. Yeah. You know what else is delicious though? I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Some good old fashioned cereal, baby. That's it. Magic spoon. That's how you start your day. Yeah. Not eating barbecue chicken in the morning. Totally, dude. And especially, you know, for a big for an athlete like yourself, working out, get a little bit of protein in your cereal. That's like a nice little little bonus. It's nutritional. They've got some uh they've got some complex carbohydrates uh in, in these delicious uh, magic spoon boxes that we love so much. Between thirteen and fourteen grams of protein. If you guys end up getting the cereal, let me know what your favorite flavors are because mm -hmm. They really honor the fact that they have different flavors. Mm -hmm. Like they taste very different. And I imagine there's like one for everybody. So I'd be curious to hear which ones you guys like. What do you like? What's yours? Right now, just same as last episode, I'm really jamming with the frosted. The frosted. The frosted. Yeah. I liked the cocoa at first, mm -hmm. but the frosted is just so rich and flavorful that I've yeah, been really jamming with that. I can see that. You would like that. <laughs> uh, I. I <laughs> I like doing I like doing the mazes and the puzzles on the backs of the boxes. It brings it's a throwback. Me, brings me back to my childhood when I was eating really unhealthy. I I can't even lie. I was always eating healthy cereal, but this is healthy cereal that feels like the unhealthy cereal that I was always jealous that other kids were allowed to eat. Right. No no added sugar. Four grams of net carbs. It's healthy. It's, it's good. Uh, tasty. Nutritious. Throw some oat milk in there. It's uh it's a wild ride. Yeah. And uh, if you use 
promo code oops at checkout on magicspoon.com. You'll get $5 off the variety pack. It comes with those four delicious flavors that we love so much. Peanut butter, cocoa, berry fruity, and frosted. The frosted. Grab them. Go now. Don't delay. So, dude, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, and this is, if you ever go to a, like, you know, you go to a bar and there'll be one bathroom and it'll be unisex. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're sitting there waiting for the bathroom and you go in and someone has destroyed the bathroom. What do you mean? They've, they've made it smell really bad yes. or they've been really yes. they've discourteous it, about the sort of cleanliness. Of they've it. made it smell really bad. It mm. smells terrible because okay. you can clean up the bathroom theoretically, unless it's like absolutely destroyed. But ten, let's, let's assume that at a classy place, they aren't destroying the fucking bathroom by any other means than the smell. Okay. Someone goes in there, crushes the bathroom, and then leaves. And now you're going in the bathroom. Yeah. And this person before you previously has destroyed it. Okay. So now when you walk back out, there will still be some kind of residual odor yeah. from the person destroying the bathroom. Maybe you've layered on top of it. Maybe, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Say you haven't. Right, right. When you walk out of the bathroom and there's a person waiting, do you tell them that the person before you destroyed the bathroom, or do you think that it's not even worth it? Um... It's a good question. I <laughs> I would because I'm a comedian. I would take that opportunity as a moment to be funny. Right. Um and say what? Say something like I just want you to know that what you're about to enter is <laughs> borderline bad for your health. <laughs> I was not responsible. I know that's what I would say if it had been me, but you're just going to have to trust me on this one. That's funny. And there's, you could also like, there's facts to be given. You'd be like, you'll notice that I was only in the bathroom for a total of 30 seconds, which would not have been long enough would you, for me to procure such a foul odor. Did you know that the person was waiting in line behind you before they watched you go in? No. And you just have to hope that there's just nobody out there. The same way that if you were actually the one doing the damage. Well, so right. So, but you, they don't know how long you've been in there unless they watched you go in. Correct. That's true. And so, but the whole, all of this is based on trust. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you also, you can kind of like make the assumption that they saw you, even if you know that they didn't, just so you can spit out the 30 second thing. It seems like you're like, you saw me go in there. Even if they didn't see you, you, you thinking they saw you mm. actually makes you like, mm -hmm. uh, citing mm -hmm. that information uh like an effective move well the the other option is to just not address it at all and realize that you're never going to have to run into this person and 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 deal with them assuming it was you in the first place well you're going to be with them for the next couple hours at the bar and you're going to be sitting at the bar and they might be like dude that guy this guy that guy this guy is disgusting something's wrong with him <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ate too many of those fried pickles. I mean, dude, I had that thought when, again when I was in Nashville and there was this single person bathroom, this little spot we were at. One question that I have about Nashville, I don't know if either of you two can answer this, um, but if you guys have the answer, I'd love to know. What is the deal with like the Saturday night cowboy hat? The guy who is like, I'm going out Saturday night, I'm throwing on my cowboy hat. Is that a thing he's always wearing? Did he decide that he was going to look good and put the cherry on top of his lovely outfit by throwing on a cowboy hat? How does the thought process go? I think I think a lot of that is is the person wearing the cowboy hat a native of Nashville or is he a tourist coming in for the weekend? Well, either way, let's assume that the tourist coming in from the weekend looks like he wears this to regularly. Like there was a lot of people where I'm like, this guy looks like this is what he wears. Oh, but but um, here's what I mean, right? Because oh. there are cowboy hat people who are just southern, right? Good old boys. That's how they dress, right. and they pull it off, right? And that's I think that's the person I'm referring to. You can kind of tell when somebody's okay. just wearing. So one you're as a not novelty. talking about the New Yorker who right. comes in, buys a cowboy hat, and says like, I want to be one of one of the locals. Right. Like I, if I saw you wearing your fucking Vans and a cowboy hat, I know you're the guy in from the weekend. If I see you wearing an insane pair of cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, I will also likely know that you're kind of like mm -hmm. the other side of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. The cowboy hat seems to suit the guy who's wearing it. And I'm just curious what sort of cowboy hat etiquette entails in a social, uh, in a social I, environment. I can't pretend to have cowboy hat etiquette nailed. I have <laughs> a pretty sick, Chris, will you grab me my cowboy hat? I have a pretty sick cowboy hat, 
but I would never wear this ironically in the South. See, that thing isn't a cowboy hat to me, though. No? No, it doesn't have the, like, shape of the cowboy hat. That is more of a, like, I don't know what the fuck it is. But it doesn't, it says safari before it says cowboys. Do you think? Yeah, the yeah, cowboy kind of, like the cowboy that. has a Originally, curve. the guy, shout out Ryan Romulo, uh, Romulo hats. Um, originally, he had done it that way with the brim turned up because I said I wanted a cowboy oh, hat. And then I saw it and I was like, I don't think that that's you the right idea. So he then bent it straight. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting, I mean, you I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, look, I'm all about, you can wear, at this point in my life, I feel confident that I can wear anything I want and people are going to make their assumptions and I'm just not going to care. Right. Because I'm I'm having a better time because of what I'm wearing. I mean, you're, and your friends, I feel, have come to expect it from you that you're going to show up with some novelty item. Uh, yeah. Whether it be a hairdo, as we saw uh, last week on the uh, with the faux hawk, mm -hmm. or a funny shirt, or a funny hat. Yeah. Or like, you know silk i'm just not trying to blend anymore in my life <laughs> i've done blending okay nobody uh, even every time i've tried to blend i've stuck out so if i'm gonna stick out you might as well do it in i've style. said something wrong or i've done something wrong so i i uh, i might as well just alert people that i'm probably gonna be a liability <laughs> and prepare them for that oh, like, oh boy this guy yeah <laughs> To your point about bathrooms, I had, I had an interesting thing happen when we had that group of people over, where, you know, we got we got a couple bathrooms in this in this apartment, and obviously there's the bathroom that is for the guests to use, but then if someone is in there and someone's desperate, we say, "Oh, go go use the other bathroom," mm -hmm. which is our bathroom that has toothbrushes in it. Mm -hmm. and our life right now i came from the party to the bathroom area to use my private bathroom right mm -hmm. but somebody was in there okay and then i realized that nobody was in <laughs> the upstairs bathroom. the guest bathroom they went straight to the and it pissed me off interesting is there a chance that the person from the first bathroom had already exited Let's assume no. Okay. And I don't think so because I was around <laughs> the first Brett bathroom enough to know that nobody, nobody was, in, was there. in there. Someone went straight. Now, yeah. here's someone a, just said, I want to use the superior bathroom. Now, it's funny how subtle the difference is between who is like a little bit more allowed to do that than someone else. Yeah. And what's the big, what is the big differentiator in your mind? What's the first thing that like there, there's, <laughs> there's something to me that's very obvious that should allow some people to use the nicer bathroom and others not well there's a couple different ways to look at this first of all if you have to do something embarrassing potential and, and but it would require in my opinion an ask if you're just going to completely bypass the guest bathroom and go to the master bathroom you have to be like listen man i'm not feeling well it's going to be embarrassing to go to the main bathroom. Can I use yours? Wow. I would be amazed if somebody said that to me. <laughs> the other is that it's a girl. That is exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Hundred. That is 100% correct. A girl's allowed to do A that. girl's allowed to use the master bathroom. 100%. Yeah. Agreed. Girls are allowed to. Yeah. Men have to use the trough. Yeah the garbage bin out back or if it's abba for example and you catch him coming out of there you can immediately be like dude what the fuck are you doing and then it's fine like that but doesn't he, escalate. he would know not to not to do it interesting because um, yeah with your good friend you could there's no sort of like you don't build up resentment because you communicate properly with each other no but if there's this a, a newish dude oh man using the master bathroom dead to you i don't think that that is a good thing to do completely as a guest i agree it's a very very poor form yeah it's bad form i agree but it's amazing isn't it amazing how we we just think women are you know they've got to they have to sit down so one as the the owner of the bathroom is the host the fact that they're not spraying all over the seat mm -hmm. there's less i guess um <laughs> 
of there's less collateral damage. Right. Their pee follicles are not <laughs> not follicles. Their pee, pee mist is not <laughs> the clinging pee mist. to the bristles of my toothbrush. <laughs> Does that make sense? The pee mist. The it pee does, mist it does. is not somehow splashing off <laughs> and getting on, you know. And and they're they're just their clean thighs, their loins yeah. are aligned perfectly with that seat. Everything about it is clean. It's a bullseye every time. They are not <laughs> disgracing or desecrating the master bathroom. That's pretty funny. Any dude. guy, every guy that uses the master bathroom is desecrating it. Dude, that's so funny. So my bathroom is the shared bathroom in our apartment. As it should be. As it should be, 100%. Um, but it is funny now that, like, you know, I'm hosting people and I'm starting to get used to these, like, little annoying things that you notice when you host people. Like, who brings stuff? Who doesn't bring stuff? Who has to bring stuff? Who doesn't? Like, all that kind of shit. It's funny to, like, learn about all that stuff. Yeah. But it is funny when somebody, like, like this has happened. Someone will go and pee in the in the toilet and forget to flush, and it's just like yellow dog pee. I'm like, dude. Oh first of all, God, dude, fucking drink some water. What, what a fuck? monster! What the fuck is wrong with you? And also, like, of, flush the toilet, dude. What what kind of people don't flush the toilet when they pee? Some people don't. What, Pe what are people they, who aren't used to going to other people's houses? What's that about? What's that? Why would they not do that? Why would they not flush the toilet? Maybe they have a fucking maid or something. I don't know. I think it comes from who they don't treat well <laughs> being a frat boy. Mm, right. And you think, well, I just peed. So I'm going to, I don't want to waste a flush on that. Well, yeah. There's the rationale doesn't add up. It's just that you're careless and not a thorough person. If you're just not, you're, flushing. A, you're an animal. I'll say this dude. You're if I brute, if I go to someone's house and I sprinkle, cause what, this is what'll happen. Sometimes I'll try not to pee in the water because I don't want to make that jarring sound. Yeah. Fine. Of yeah. The, <sighs> You don't want so, to sound like you're showing off. <laughs> I just don't want to be ripping the fucking bowl. But the problem is with that, when you pee on the side of the water, you're more likely to be sprinkly. It is true. Some so, of those uh, toilet sides are not steep enough right, right. to collect the pee. Correct. So if for whatever reason I happen to get any residual sprinkle anywhere, I will immediately clean it all up. And not only that, I'll clean up whatever residue was there before. Wow. As well. That You're, is what I do. You are like a really good camper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the leave campsite. it nicer than it was before. Correct. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Good because I, you. you know, it's going into someone's fucking bathroom and fucking it up is such a dick bag. Sure move, is. Dude. Sure is. Don't do that. No, don't be that guy. Damn, bro. <laughs> well, you know, the whole P game is, is definitely uh, something. Uh, there's, there's so many ins and outs and you can never be too careful which you could also say by the way about your life insurance <laughs> you could definitely say it about your life you insurance sure could, buddy. uh as ned the head R ryerson said in groundhog day <laughs> if you got any life insurance you could always use a little more am i right am i right you sure could. am i right so um policy genius policy genius is the place to go it's the most seamless easiest way to compare quotes and get a sense of the market and uh, save lots of money. We are pretty familiar with the interface. It is a great way to compare and contrast different policies. The agents who work for Policy Genius, they are more concerned about you than they are the insurance company. The idea is to try to find you the best deal and you can save a ton of money. That's it. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You could save $1,300 or more per year on cash. life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policy policies. It's Policy Genius, one word uh, with a P and a G. <laughs> uh, getting started is easy. Go to policygenius.com. Um, they never tell your, give your information to other companies. Uh, it doesn't add on any extra fees. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Oh, sure is. That's it, Jake. Oh, it sure is. That's what we like to hear. I love it, bro. Yeah. Dude, do you ever do something as a kid that you just that, that you regret? There's a couple of things that I've oh done. Oh my god! Yeah, we, um, absolutely. Quite. A, I I can think of a, like a bunch. And if you want to go tit for tat here, I'd be open to it. No, um, we've talked about regrets before, but uh, I want. I'm excited to hear new ones that you have. Childhood regrets. You didn't even know you were doing something wrong, and then you realize it was wrong, mm -hmm. but you needed to learn that. For example, here's a good one. One of my buddy's uh, older brothers, who was like, um, in a way, kind of like my older brother. They lived in the neighborhood for a number of years. 
And eventually he ended up becoming a substitute teacher at our school. And I think he's now just a teacher. Like, I'm not sure exactly where, um, and I don't want to blow up his spot. But like when he became the teacher, I felt the need to like run around telling people embarrassing stories about him, <laughs> thinking that they would think it was funny. And I was like, oh yeah, like he farted on me once or like whatever, like shit like that, like stupid shit. Uh -huh. And one day he had to be like, hey man, he was like angry. He was like, listen, like, can you please stop telling people these embarrassing stories about me? Like, this is my job. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, dude, I'm so sorry. Like, That's I know. tough. And I was like 15. I should have known better. But for some reason, I just thought that he would think that was awesome. And I feel so bad about it still. He's like a wonderful guy. Oh. And dude, introduce me to Wu Tang. Like, introduce me to things that are like the most important things in my life. Wu, Wu Tang is a very important thing in my life. Really? Yes. Very. Um, Why? Because I just love their music. It was like my introduction into hip hop. I've listened to their entire catalog, each individual member's entire catalog, the, them as a group's entire catalog. I've seen every single one of them in concert. Besides Old Dirty Bastard, the one night I had tickets and I got, uh, there was a snowstorm. My parents wouldn't let me drive. The second time it was the reunion show, I showed up. He didn't show up. Everyone cursed him out. Next day, he was dead. That's great. So I never Dude, got I to didn't, see. First of all, never got to see ODB. I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna out myself here. <laughs> I don't know that much about Wu Tang. That's okay. I don't think that's unusual. But they're they're spoken of in yeah. in awe inspired whispers i gotta be honest too there's something annoying about the fact that i know that most of these fucking hipsters walking around wu-tang shirts couldn't name five songs okay right i mean but it's still okay i, I, I like that they live on i take i take it face value that they are this colossal game-changing hip-hop group right i like one or two of their songs that, okay. that i've i've listened to cool um but i couldn't I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know the history. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel embarrassed. That's okay. And I mean, dude, I love them at the time. I'm really satisfied with how well their music holds up still. Each member sort of presented their own kind of unique style. And as far as the content went as well, there was something for everybody really intelligent and clever kind of like word smithing. If for, mm. I, for, I can't think of a, <laughs> Of a better term, good lyrics, um, really good original sounding flow. They're just the best, dude. I cool. love them. Yeah. So anyway, he introduced me to that. Interesting. Um, Method and, Man, Red Man, yeah, yeah. RZA, Red, Jizza. Red Man is not in Wu Tang. Is that right? Yeah. He is definitely like as parallel of a member as you can get. Besides this guy Capadonna, who is technically not a member, but he is. So I would say Red Man is next, just behind Capadonna. Who else? Who else? It's RZA, Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Raekwon, You God. Uh, Ghostface Killer, Master Killer, Inspector Deck. Uh, did I say Method Man? Yeah. Um, there's one more that I'm That's forgetting. a huge group. Raekwon. Were they all in most of their songs? No, they're not always in them. Like, because they would just be too crazy. That's a big But there are some songs group. like, you know, there's a famous song called Triumph, which you may or may not know. Is that the um, one that goes bum bum ba dum bum 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 bum? No, that's bum, that's bum, called bum, Cream. Cash yeah, rules everything around that's me. That's the one I really like. Cream, get the I money. Listen, that's on one of my dude. Listen to there. the Inspector Deck verse. Listen to the lyrics. It's just like one of the most fire fucking verses you'll ever hear in your life. Okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, like some tracks they'll all be on it. Other tracks they won't. Um, but my favorite solo albums, in case you're looking to get involved with it, um, I would check out Only Built for Cuban Links by Raekwon. It's one of the most classic hip-hop albums ever made. Is Raekwon acting a lot now? Uh, Method Man is. Um, RZA is. RZA's acting quite a bit. He's RZA's like very in, Hollywood. Uh, Kill Bill. Yeah, he, stuff, scores, right? he scored Kill Bill. Wow. RZA's awesome. RZA's like the mastermind. Um, but yeah, check out Only Built for Cuban Links. And check out Ghostface's first two albums, Iron Man, Supreme Clientele. Mm. Um, and then just check out the Wu-Tang albums, especially the first few. Cool. So, All right. Wu anyway, Tang. so he showed me that, you know, he was just an important part in my, of my life. And I felt guilty that I did him dirty. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but isn't that, isn't it funny that being a teacher is the job, is a job where people can't know much about your past. If there's it's any, just like a dick move or people won't respect you. You're supposed to be taken as a clean, you know, perfect person. Right, right. You need. You yeah. can't come into teaching, you know, after going around and frequenting brothels. <laughs> There's no understanding of like the nuance of oh, just because this person lived a normal life means that he also has authority. Like when you're that young, 
Yeah. You need to sort of have like a grip. Right. Well, um, I, don't know. I uh, the thing that came to mind when you asked if there were things from my childhood that I regretted was I had a very different idea, which is I remember when I was like six or seven years old, I developed a technique <laughs> for um, disarming my parents when they were mad at me. Interesting. Um, and somehow, I don't even know how I discovered this, but if they were you know, telling me off, scolding me, I would say with with sort of almost tearful eyes, <laughs> why do you hate me? <laughs> How old are you? I don't know, somewhere between six and 10. A cute ass age. Why Why do you hate me? Why do, would Did it, it work? The first handful of times. <laughs> because instantly, you know, my mom or my dad would be like, oh my God, no, I don't. Right, right. I don't hate you. What, why would you say that? <laughs> that of course I don't. Clever. Man. And then they're not mad at you anymore. Right. Now they're fixing you. Right. Um, but you can only the play the card so many times before they're like, "Look, I know you don't fucking think I hate you." <laughs> right. You know, right. shut up, you dumb bitch, <laughs> and go to your room. And be in timeout. Right. Right. Um, but it worked. It was, and and I will say this: looking back. It was such a nuclear option as I know. as a child to make my parents think that I thought they hated me because I don't. I remember knowing they didn't hate me. Of course, you're just being. Oh, dead. It's just a very manipulative thing for a child to do to a parent. It's amazing how quickly you start to learn those tricks when you're a little kid, dude. Like yeah. even when you're a baby, fucking, you know you can get away with shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like pretty nuts, man. That's it, dude. One time I called my grandfather all right so my grandparents they lived in new york they moved to new york they migrated here my grandfather was a waiter at a variety of places some that are still here and some that aren't he worked at the palm mm, he worked palm. at the plaza hotel wow um i think he did very well for himself because he moved back to italy 30 years later and built himself this sick house that right. is still in the family i believe um down the street my aunt lived and during the day, I'd go over to my aunt's house. She'd buy me ice cream. I would always eat like a whole box of these things, fucking cucciolone. I would get fat. Like I'd come back from Italy fat every time. Um, and one day I thought it would be funny to call my grandfather, pretending to be crying, and saying that Zia Luisa fell. Oh, boy. <laughs> and him and this guy Cordani, this guy Cordani used to like, he, he was their handyman. They sprinted down just to s discover me laughing. At the fact that I had pulled a fat, like a funny joke that apparently. And then what did they do? They like told me that it was fucked up. They didn't hit you or anything? No, but I was like a little kid, dude. Again, I would like, have thought they would have hit you. They just treated me like a baby. And they're like, okay, don't do that. I, I could have like, seen them taking off their newsboy caps and cuffing you <laughs> around the ears. <laughs> Pretty sure Cotodani wore one of those hats. Yeah. Those newsboy hats. Um, but dude, it's so far. I feel so bad about that still. Yeah. My, my grandfather fucking rest in peace. His poor heart sprinting down the fucking like there it was a really steep road too because they kind of lived on the top of this little mountain situation oh. sprinting down this road just to find that i had swindled them not swindled them Yikes. deceived them yeah fucked up dude well we've all got those regrets but you know what dude you've got to write off a, a lot of it to just the innocence of youth not not having any sense between right and wrong yeah. There wasn't a part of you that did like that known, that was bro. like, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. Once you get to that age where you're aware of the misdeed before you commit it mm. and you say, I'm going to do it anyway, it's worth it. That's when you're like, a, be, become bad. a bad person. Bad. Yeah, you're right. yeah. It's still, yeah. Spit on Zio Butch's head while he was giving me a piggy, like a mm. shoulder thing. I got, I got something I want to talk to you about. Please. My girlfriend has become aware that there are certain people in my professional life with whom I sort of put on a bit of a facade. Okay. So like she can tell who you truly like and who you don't like. She much. can tell when I'm being fake because I know that it might be benefit me professionally mm -hmm. or that i don't have a choice that to be honest would hurt me professionally okay let's let's go that route because i don't want to say that i'm up there sucking buttholes <laughs> but no, you, you, in order to give yourself a more pleasant time navigating through the scene you gotta pretend like you gotta suck like. some butt 
It's okay. There's definitely some butt sucking that has to happen. Suck a little butt. You hope people will like you for you, but comedians don't. People in entertainment don't. Nobody, nobody likes you for you. In general, nobody's that great. Right. Um. So, you suck a little butt, and she watches it, and she's witnessed it, and she's been able to really put up a radar that can tune at. You know, she's right. in tune. And then she'll, she doesn't call me on it then and there. Just when you go to kiss her, she's like, wash your mouth out. Yeah. Oh, that butt you've been feasting yeah, on. Yeah, your breath <laughs> smells like dingleberries. Oh, my God. No, no, no. No, I'm not sucking butt that hard. I'm not sucking the dingles off. Oh, God. I'm not, I'm not de-dingling, you know? Come on, relax, guys. <laughs> but I'm, she, she calls me on it. She's like, why do you do that? And then I'm like, well, I, you know, then then you sort of step back and you're like, why do I do that? Mm. And is it like you're going overboard to make it seem like you actually like them when you truly don't, as opposed to like being neutral? There are certain people that she has met that she does not like. And then she doesn't understand why I do, because <laughs> the very reasons why she doesn't like them, I use to say why I don't like a lot of people. Got it. And you don't actually like these people who she doesn't like. Um, <clears throat> Or you do. I'm, I'm, it's, it's weird. And are these um, comedy people usually that you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, people, right. people in our world, yeah. Because I have trouble imagining her disliking people in general, but I do get how some comedians can just push you. Comedians can be difficult. They're just, the whole prima donna thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the entitlement in our, in, you know, I think is something that I have r voiced my disgust for mm -hmm. in so many other realms of life mm -hmm. and then for some reason i'm uh, I, I give it a pass in the people in our industry is it because it's somebody who's like bigger than you i think it's it's that and i'm that, also you know? i'm also just accustomed to it so i i kind of don't what am i going to do Take i'm not going to the change chin. these people i don't, I don't right. you know i recognize that speaking out against it would only would only make my life harder. Right. Um, and so the problem is, is that she's called me on this. And now when I see some of those people, <laughs> I am having a harder time now Faking it. sucking the butt. <laughs> I'm having a harder time. And I, every time I do, I feel as if I'm dishonoring my girlfriend and I'm not being true to myself. And she's just like secretly your shrink, dude. Like between the, yeah, the but she, in good intention I, diary. And I <laughs> I need her. Yeah, no, totally. To be I need her to let me suck the butts on this one. Okay. I need her to be okay with it, to recognize recognize that it's part and parcel of, of what we do. Does she call you out after she sees you do it again with the, the a repeat offender, or do you just know she's thinking it? I know she's thinking it. <laughs> she's already called me out. She doesn't yeah. probably feel the need to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But I know she's thinking it. And then, then when I'm doing it in front of her, I feel like I'm just, I'm like, oh, she's doing watching me dance. fucking jump and jive. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Soft shoe around this person. <laughs> and she knows how I really feel or whatever. And, you get yourself in trouble with that in a relationship when you start. If you're going to start bitching about people, you have to be prepared to have your partner call you out when there are inconsistencies in your behavior with them. So you have to wonder, you're like, is this worth complaining about? Because even with me, like some of my best friends, like, or just shit in general, like you'll forgive a person before your best friends or your lover will forgive them for you. So it's almost the same as like complaining about your girlfriend to your parents too much. You're just like conditioning them to not like your girlfriend. Yes. You got to pick your battles. Is what yes, you're talking about, you, you know? have to shield for your own benefit. Yes, yes, yeah, and the benefit of whatever relationship you have with this person. Yeah, the it's shielding. I've learned that. I've learned the benefit of shielding, <laughs> withholding. Um, yeah, but it's it sucks, man. I don't know. Um, do you feel that you are you present a very honest version of yourself? when you're in your professional realm yeah are you you i think so do you think so like maybe i know when there's a situation where i want to be a little more likable i'm like okay i'm gonna turn up this and that because i think it's gonna make people like me more or it's gonna make me get more attention or 
and maybe subtly, but I do think that like pretty true. I am fairly true to form, although I'm much more likely to entertain a terrible story from somebody who I want to be in their good graces. You know what I mean? Which is completely normal in a work setting, by the way. You're mm-hmm. going to listen to your boss's stupid joke, obviously. And granted, these aren't the boss, but a lot of the time in comedy, your peers end up being your gatekeepers as well. So you kind of want to cultivate relationships with people because you think it'll help you. You know what I mean? Totally. So I think that, dude, without, like, if I were to, if you're just truly, fully, 100% yourself, you, like, are just a little bit on the spectrum, dude. Like, you can't help but be fully yourself, unapologetically yourself. Right. And there are certainly comics like that. And to be honest, it's frustrating to see it work for them. Like those comics who just like can be themselves completely. And yeah, it's just but like, then uh, but then they are then they are aware that they are that, and then you wonder, is this even who they are? Right, right. Or have right. they just sold themselves on this idea this of, of who people expect them to be or who they think they are? Interesting. Who? Interesting. Yeah, nobody nobody should be one hundred percent themselves one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, you gotta you gotta adapt a little. Right. You know. Right. I mean, look. I'm not so narcissistic as to not be aware that I say things on this podcast that you laugh at, but you probably don't think are that funny. And I'm not I'm not accusing you of being fake. You're no, being don't. kind. <laughs> You're being a good partner. Or there's also there's sort of, you know, sometimes there's a degree of that's funny. That deserves a laugh. Even if it doesn't like naturally come out, you're it's, giving like a sincere acknowledgement. You're of verbally texting me, LOL. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Which I think is its own form of sincere laughter. I would argue. Interesting. If I just sat here and was like, hmm, yeah, dude, that would suck. Our it would, would suck. suck. So it yeah, would yeah. suck. I don't find Ruin myself manufacturing laughs regularly. Okay. All right. Well, dude, listen, we do what we have to do to fit in, but there's some things that I personally am not willing to compromise on. And one of those things is my alone time in the morning. And that comes along with a nice hot cup of Joe. Oh, yeah. Brooklyn Roasting Company, the finest beans out there, dude. The best beans that money can buy. So fucking good. We've heard the bad news that apparently the peanut butter, uh, the coffee peanut butter is sold out for the time being. We're hoping that they're going to get some more of that, but apparently it's flying off the shelves because it's amazing. It's amazing. You better keep an eye out, though, because as soon as they get that restock, you better believe it's going to go pretty quick again. Totally. And it's one of those companies that everything that they have is worth having. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, their merch is cool. They're, all their products are cool. Like, just fucking buy whatever. Yeah, but the, and, but uh, the coffee, the coffee it's delicious. is, is the, the crowning product. It's really good. Um, As I've said, I'm a huge fan of the, the BQE espresso. Mm. I like the Iris espresso. So, but if you're not an espresso drinker, they have so many different blends from all over the the world. Uh, you know, they source from Ethiopia and from South America, and and uh, it's worth just trying a bunch of different things. They have good um, color coding to tell you like what notes are in what, and if it's dark or if it's light or mm-hmm. what kind of you know almost feeling the you key. Get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do quite frankly, you whip up a, a person that just slept over your house for the first time, a cup of that. And I promise you, you're getting around to right away. You are going to enjoy a little morning patty cake. Or you're going to find out you're going to be like, are you by chance an oops listener? Yeah. That's oh my it. God. Yeah. Yeah. And we like it when you guys <laughs> yeah. tag us in your photos uh, featuring Brooklyn Roasting because it just makes us know that that people are really buying on to the to the the good hype, shit. the craze. It's not hype. It's real. We love Brooklyn Roasting. Go to brooklynroasting.com. Use promo code OOPSBEANS. You'll get 5% off your first order. I promise you, we absolutely stand behind this product. We love, we love it. it. Grab uh, some. Get some coffee. Uh, dude, what do you say we close out with an email here? Bring us home. Bring home. Okay, this is called the Code of Silence. Okay. Listen to the section about guy code about the guy code of silence when you go to bachelor parties and having and after having been on several and seen some shit i have a question do you remain silent even to your significant other i went on a long weekend trip for one of my friends bachelor parties it was about 16 guys in a sick beach house and everything was pretty standard fratty bro behavior i.e excessive drinking riverboat gambling beer pong tournaments etc the last night before departure someone had a stripper come over And I hung out in the background, not really participating with several other married men. Parentheses, I was married at the time. I honestly don't know what some of the guys did as eventually I walked away, but we all remained silent, or so I thought. 
One of the married guys immediately immediately came home and told his wife about all the activity activities, including said stripper. And that wife was so, oh, sorry, sorry, my significant other's best friend. So that wife was this guy's significant other's best friend, clarify. Months went by, uh, and at the guy who was the bachelor's wedding, the one other guy who had initially told his wife spilled the beans in front of everyone, and I looked like a lying jackass Wait. because I didn't tell my wife, and she suspected me of debauchery behavior. What the hell? The guy told the story at the wedding? <laughs> I guess. Not that it matters now, but holding to the guy code burned me because in all realities, I would have told her everything because I had nothing to hide, but I was protecting the other guys, and it burned me. It's a good question, dude. This is an interesting one. Lots to unpack here. I honestly think there's nothing wrong with having a conversation with the boys and being like, guys, is this a secret? Like, I don't feel any need to keep this a secret, but like, uh, like my wife isn't going to care, but if your wives are going to care, I just won't say anything. Problem averted, right? I think that's a, I think that's a really... Um, is that lame? No, I think that's a really fine precursor, I guess, agreement. Yeah. Um, like, are strippers a big deal? Like, I don't think so. As long as you're not banging them. Like, I, strippers are fine, right? Yeah, I don't know, I don't dude. I don't think... I, I think... Uh, first of all, I know a lot of guys say this. Like, I am not a stripper guy. I, I, I actively think that they take away right. from the enjoyment of a, of a situation. I can be a stripper guy if the vibes are good. I'm not. If there's like some weird pimp guy standing at the door, like that sucks. Dude, everything about strippers is, is weird to me. Yeah. I, I, it's like what, what I'm trying to just hang out with my friends and now all of a sudden there's Someone's a, naked. a naked woman dancing mm -hmm. two feet away. Mm -hmm. God forbid she tries to make me part of the thing mm -hmm. and everyone's like you gotta crack him he's the stubborn one <laughs> next thing you know i'm on the ground <laughs> having sex like, in front of everyone you know, not even not even just like <laughs> doing some weird shit like uh maybe yeah. she put a dildo on my forehead and she's trying to right 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 you know what i mean right, right. and and let's also be clear here we're not assume we're not making the assumption that every stripper is also willing to like have sex for more money but that is a thing that does happen. Yeah. That's a thing that happens. So we're not, just, I don't want you guys I, to think we're like yeah. adult industry I'm, shaming. I'm lucky in that my friends are pretty anti-stripper as well. In mm -hmm. fact, the Jackson Hole bachelor party, <laughs> the groom emailed everyone before and was like, under no circumstances should anyone try to surprise me with a stripper like that would not fly. I do not want that. And everyone's like, yeah, we, we get it. Like yeah. nobody was really planning to, but right. you know, just sort of like you, you it's strange. You, you kind of think you understand your friends, you know what people want. I feel like there are bachelor parties where everyone wants a stripper or yeah. strippers. And then there are bachelor parties where people are like, that's not, we're past we're not that. Doing like, that. Come on, give me a break. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm in that second category. Yeah. Um, but as far as the code of silence, I think that applies to, you know, scenarios outside of just this. And it's that you, you get to an age where people tell their wives or their fiancés or their girlfriends everything. Right. If you tell someone something, their girlfriend 100%, or wife is knowing. Yeah, 100% of the things. And the, the reason is that couples run out of things to talk about. <laughs> and if you give someone in a relationship a tasty tidbit, they are, all they, got. they think that's, well, I got, I got to keep the relationship alive. I need to, uh, finally, <laughs> something worth sharing, something that'll, right. you know, it, it's, it's an interesting thing that they can then discuss and analyze and all of that. Um, and a lot of the times that means that the wife will then share it on with her friends right. if it really is a tasty thing. Right. And, you got to a point where you need to know that what you share with somebody who's married is going to go to the wife as well. Agreed. Unless it's like, unless you preempt it by saying, what I'm about to tell you must not be shared. Mm -hmm. I, I'm relying on you. It's super sensitive. Like mm -hmm. it, it can't go to, you know, I yeah. guess. And dude, also like the thing about strippers though, I, I gotta be honest, I think that if I went to a bachelor party, Hillary didn't ask me if there were strippers and I didn't tell her there were strippers and she found out there were strippers and I was like, you're not supposed to rat on your boys. She, that would be completely fine. 
Yeah, I think that's... I like to think. I don't know. It's never happened, so... <laughs> I think I think that's the other thing. But but to your point, to this email's point, the group of married guys who aren't involved, right? That one guy fucked all of them. I know, I know, yes. He fucked all of them. Yes. Because if one guy shares it... Weakest link. Then... The other guys look like they were trying to hide it. They look complicit. Right. And then they look shady. Totally. And they weren't. Right. right? So that sucks. Yeah. 100%. Um, I don't have a problem necessarily with that married guy telling his wife, but then he owes the other married guys, especially if they're all in like a fucking circle together, you know, with their wives, they're all friends. It's going to get out. Mm -hmm. I also don't understand how this guy told the story at the wedding that seems totally inappropriate i know i know what the hell is going on here well maybe it wasn't like in a speech maybe it was just like oh yeah the strippers like or something i don't know Wh whatever it is that guy sounds like somebody that should not have been trusted to be invited to the bachelor right, party right, right. um so yeah it sucks like if you my, my my sad advice would be if you trust your wife hedge your bets and like let her know you know yeah, we were at a bachelor party. There was a stripper. Obviously, I had nothing to do with it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah. you know, if you think there's a chance that somehow that information is going to get out, you might as well get ahead of it and, like, own your truth in it. Yeah. And even if, like, listen, again, I, I don't think getting a lap dance is a fucking problem, in my opinion. Like, I just don't see how or why that would ever be a problem. Maybe it is in your relationship, but you know your relationship, so yeah. you know what's okay and what isn't okay, so you just have that conversation. Yeah, I don't. It's never come up in my relationship. I just don't. But that's. I mean, it's not even because of her. It's just that I personally find strippers, lap dances. I find it all very asexual. Mm. It's bizarre. No, totally. It's like a person who doesn't actually like you. You know, they're doing it for like it's their job to dance on yeah. you and make you excited. Yeah. There's something it, like it's so fake. Stu like it, you're just like a stupid guy. She likes me. When I was single. <laughs> Right. When I was single, given the option to go to a strip club and pay for these orchestrated no lap dances no versus go to a bar and try to meet someone and hook up with them. The latter. Even if the girl was less attractive at the bar, I would prefer that. Totally. It's way 100, more. 100%. And, and all day long. Yeah. All right. Good shit. That's it. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Take us out of here, Julia. It's the podcast. Uh, we love you guys. Having a good time. This is good shit. Uh, send us your thoughts, your emails. Uh, we are slowly getting through all of them. Thank you guys for sharing all your shit. Uh, subscribe to Francis' Patreon. Patreon.com slash Francis Ellis. We got the book club. Yeah. And the we're book reading Woman in the cool. Window, AJ Finn, and we're, we're going to go over it. But Boozy a great idea. Club. Yeah, people should join that for that because that's going to be super fun. July 14th. You got to have it finished by then. Cool. And check out some of my Ecuador content by the time this episode's coming out. Uh, I think at least the first episode will be out. Um, so that'll probably be on a couple of different platforms, but I will definitely let you know where it is. So check it out. Let me know what you think. And thank you guys again. And we'll talk to you soon.